Can you see me, hear me clearly? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Let's begin today's session. Keep your back in next to it. Sit comfortably. And when you feel ready, very gently close your eyes. Bring the mind to the breathing. Watch each inhalation and each exhalation. without making any change to the flow of the breath. Be aligned in your posture. Your body should be comfortable and steady. Slowly begin to deepen the breathing. Slow, long and deep breaths. We will begin today's session by chanting Om three times, followed by three shantis. Take a deep breath in for Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Observe the vibrations. Join the palms together and begin to rub the palms together. Keep the palms on the arms. Very slowly while blinking and looking at the palms, begin to open up the eyes and come back with a big smile. Namaste everyone. 
let us begin our session for today <clears throat> so we were talking about bhagavad gita yesterday and today i'll just give you a little bit uh, factual information about the text right so <clears throat> so this text has in total 18 chapters and 700 shlokas so the 700 shlokas are divided into 18 chapters and um, as you can see the number is more than patanjali yoga sutra so of course it might seem that it's better to read that text it's shorter but again the language in which this text has been presented it is um simpler so it's easier to understand right uh, and again it is in conversation format so both these things contribute to the um easy grasping of this te- uh, this text right so um the uh, this is a part of the way famous epic mahabharat so uh, mahabharat has been uh, like um divide has been divided into parts okay p a r v a parv and in uh, mahabharat the uh, bhagavad gita it is a part of the bhishma parv b h i s h m a bhishma parv so from 25 to 42 okay so bhishma parv from the 25th chapter till the 42nd chapter this portion of mahabharat is specifically known as bhagavad gita right so uh, bhagavad gita the author is ved vyas v e d v y a s e ved vyas right he wrote mahabharat so of course bhagavad gita because it's a part of mahabharat only so he is the author however uh, bhagavad gita was properly compiled and it became famous from the time of uh, adi shankara acharya okay so compiler of this text is adi shankara acharya a d i s h e n k e r shankar acharya a c h a r y a so he is the uh, like from his time bhagavad gita specifically gained a lot of like like a lot of people started reading it it caught a lot of attention from his time um <clears throat> as i told you there are total four characters in this text uh, it's a conversation within a conversation right so yesterday even though i told you a little bit i'll just write down everything today so that you guys can note it also <clears throat> so i'll write down the name of all the four characters you can just uh keep that um
looks great. Just one. So the uh, father of the uh, Kauravs, Dhritarash and Sanjay. One conversation is this and then other conversation is between Lord Krishna and Arjun. Okay, so this is the overall like one conversation, the first one that I've written, the conversation that took place between Lord Krishna and Arjun, it's being narrated by Sanjay to Dhritarasht. Okay, so uh, at the end of the 10 days of the war, that is when, um, you know, Sanjay started narrating the entire incident to um, Dhritarasht. And uh, that is when he, again, told about what Lord Krishna was telling Arjun at that point of time. So I'll just give you the exact number also of the shlokas. Yes. So Dhritarasht only has one uh, he only has one uh, verse in the entire text and Sanjay has 41 verses. And for the second combination, Lord Krishna and Arjun, so Krishna has the most uh, verses, so 547 verses are given by Krishna. And uh, Arjun, there are only 84 verses. Okay, so that is why majorly people know of uh, this being a conversation between these two characters only because as you can see, most of the verses, uh, both of them have. And Krishna, because he is giving the explanation, he is trying to tell everything uh, properly to Arjun. He has the a maximum amount of uh, verses, right? It's when it comes to this text. Um, this text is also called Krishna Arjun Sambad. Okay, so I'm not going to write this down, but yes, so Krishna Arjun Sambad. So basically conversation between Krishna and Arjun. So Bhagavad Gita is known by multiple names, right? So it's not necessary that you will always find uh, the name Gita, right? So it's uh, known by multiple names and one of them is Krishna Arjun Samvad, which again tells you that it is in conversation format. This text is uh, also one of the Upanishads of Yoga. So like I told you yesterday, it is the, um, it takes out the essence of all the Upanishads. So if you see the Upanishads, they are also divided in various categories. So one of the Yoga Upanishads is actually Bhagavad Gita. Um, again, uh, this text is basically a conversation between the higher mind and the lower mind for us. And uh, it's also a conversation between the intellect and the senses. So you know how your senses always want to run away or they want to... Um, if something is the correct thing to do, they don't want to follow that thing. So they always, you know, find a reason why they shouldn't go for something, right? So Arjun is actually representing the senses, right? And he is being completely drawn uh, by the direct consequence, right, of his actions. He is not seeing the bigger picture, right? But the intellect is always able to see the bigger picture. You know, discipline will not always seem good to you guys. But when you uh, begin to see the bigger picture behind it, you start incorporating little, little changes in your life. So uh, the senses, uh, this text also gives you an insight into, you know, how you have to approach your senses. Okay, so most of the times we know, but we are unable to do the things, right? So at that point of time, this text is 
a major uh, a testament of how you have to slowly gain control over your senses so you will see a lot of people you know who come into or step into spirituality they are uh, expected to do certain things one thing is this and second thing they themselves go into extremes right and no uh, like uh, no one ever you know approaches with a uh, balanced point of view right even in spirituality we go out of balance and it is quite ironic because it is supposed to bring the balance the harmony that we are missing in our lives right so this text when you read it you will actually understand how slowly you have to you know um, work with your senses right you cannot tie yourself down right going into an extreme because you will jump back to the other extreme very very quickly because the mind has a very oscillating kind of tendency right one day you will convince it to do one thing and the other day it might convince you to do some other thing right so in order to slowly slowly give it direction right you have to approach the senses in a particular manner right and that is that has been clarified as you you know read bhagavad gita so this is a text which uh, actually elaborates on the four major schools so these four major schools are going to be our topic of the discussion next so four major schools which is first one is karma yoga bhakti yoga gyan yoga and raj yoga okay karma yoga k a r m a then we have bhakti b h a k t i gyan j n a n a and raj yoga r a j a okay so arjun is basically you know coming up with all the excuses that you guys can come up with that is also why this text is so relatable right all the excuses that we give up to ourselves you know because sometimes you know our excuses also sound logically very sound right they seem very correct so it's very hard to oppose them right so arjun is also in a very deep conflict at that point of time so he says that you know krishna begins to explain that how you know the action uh, you know uh, it's the intention intention is what is mattering you have to fulfill your duty and then you know when this comes up then arjun directly asks him you know then why should i even do the action right which is exactly what most students are so when they come in yoga they are like if there is you know no uh, point of uh, like in yoga if we have to renounce all the desires then what's the point of desires right but they if uh, they are unable to see how slowly the intention of their desire or the qualities of their desires are changed right so right now we have so many desires yes so we cannot directly come out of them but at least earlier the desire was for something which was uh, maybe which was maybe destructive for someone else right or which was not that useful for us also but eventually uh, before you go to the stage of yogi you know the desire to get free also comes now getting free is also a desire no you guys had that desire that you wanted to free yourself from the suffering right that is why you joined the classes of yoga but the look at the quality of the desire right the quality of the desire changed which made you come on this path right mm-hmm. so krishna ji also makes this very very clear you know renouncing the action is not the way right but look at the quality look at the uh, you know area where you work you have to work on the detachment right so yesterday like i was saying this same thing right 
most of the people uh, they you know think that they should renounce the action right so if some injustice is going around them then the yogi doesn't react right this doesn't mean that in your action there is no strictness right so there is this very famous story around this entire thing yeah so at one point of time you know there was a a snake that existed in a forest right so now the snake was very very you know um, poisonous and very very you know always used to remain in a very defensive mode right immediately attack if somebody crossed that path right and now the villagers that lived around there they were very very you know afraid right so they never used that path to cross the forest and reach the other side and it was actually the shortest way okay so now they weren't able to access the shortest way because of this thing right so one time uh, after a few days you know a yogi came by he was crossing that village so all the villagers they stopped him they said that uh, you stay uh, there is a snake around here and we are unable to cross so maybe if we cross with you or if you are over here so you might be able to you know deal with the snake right so uh, the yogi said okay i will go from this path only and you will see yogi uh, has a very you know strong kind of vibration right so all the creatures that generally attack each other they become very very playful and very very you know friendly towards one another in the presence of the yogi right so they go they uh, like don't go with their natural instincts when the the yogi is present around right so now when the yogi was passing by so he met the snake on the route right and uh, he had a conversation with the snake okay so he asked them that uh, as the snake why do you do this thing why do you always attack the villagers so the snake said that uh, no no if i don't attack then uh, i will not remain a snake right so i have to attack so then the yogi you know eventually had a very good discussion with him and the yogi said that okay don't attack them you keep your space right and i will make sure that i communicate that they don't harm you or disturb you right so the snake said okay let's come to this final deal that they will not harm me and uh, they'll just cross and i will let them cross by okay so eventually the yogi went back to the people and uh, he said that you can go from this path it is safe now i have you know already met the snake and we have come to one agreement okay so now what started happening was people started passing by right from that route so human beings are human beings no when we are given leverage we take advantage of that thing right so initially they started passing by with some fear right because before there were so many instances of being attacked so now initially they began and they passed the route with some fear right but eventually when they saw there was the snake wasn't attacking the snake was there okay so they could see the snake but the snake chose not to attack okay so then eventually what started happening like we take everything for granted the you know villagers also started taking the snake for granted that the snake is present but the snake is not attacking okay so in eventually what started happening they started you know um, um uh, mistreating the snake basically right and eventually a point came where they in fact you started using the snake as a rope you know earlier they used to be wells right so to take out the water they started using the snake as a you know way of pulling the water up from the ground right so with a lot of time you know eventually this stage was Uh, had come that the snake started getting abused right so now the yogi that had come by so many days ago he again you know happened to cross the same village right so now when he was crossing the forest he saw the snake and he saw the snake by the well so he came to the snake and he said that what happened you know why are you like being used like a rope i asked you not to attack but what is going on right so the snake said you only asked that i shouldn't attack so i stopped attacking all the people that were passing by and look at uh, look what they have done to me on your advice i stopped harming the people 
and what is happening right so then the yogi said i asked you not to attack them but you have to maintain the sense of fear right aapko dar bana ke rakhna padega right so in that same way when you know we look at yoga also right then the snake understood oh this is what the yogi was saying this is what the yogi had been telling him all along it is not the action that has to be or the you know kind of uh, action he was taking that was not the solution but the fear had to be maintained right if every once in a while he would have hissed right so everybody would have you know jumped right or uh, tried to you know stay on their route but he gave the leverage right where when he was taught something else he did not grasp the lesson right so all of you when you go back nobody is asking you to renounce your actions what is being actually asked to do is the is the suspension of the expectation right when you do your tasks when you do go through the process of your this expectation will itself start to go away right you will still have to be very strict you will have to show the strictness in a lot of situations where you need to set this thing straight yog doesn't tell you that okay observe the injustice that is going on right yog tells you what is the correct way to deal with that injustice bhagavad gita will give you the correct way to approach the situation not avoid the situation arjun when he was standing over there he was trying to avoid the situation something had to be done because an injustice had occurred but when he said that i don't want to fight what he actually did was he tried to do what he tried to step away from the action and it is easy you know for most of us it is easier to step back right in most situations but that is not the solution if you do not highlight the thing that is troubling you if you do not maintain uh, the you know uh, maybe the position that you have been given wherever you are working or studying or in your family then everybody will step on you right yog doesn't tell you that no let everybody step on you right yog tells you that you have to work on the mind right asana pranayam everything is putting the work only in one place that is the mind you know if the state of your mind is non reactive no matter what you know life has in store for you or has to offer you you will understand the correct way of managing or dealing with it that is why bhagavad gita one of the reasons why bhagavad gita has is being taught in corporate world especially these days is because of this people it is the text for management right how do you manage how do you because everything finally boils down to the management the way in which you are managing your life right from the very beginning you if you feel that you know uh, something is not working in your favor you have to change the management strategy you don't have to change the situation right all you can do is how you manage that thing right and this entire so this text will expose you to uh, the variety of the styles of you right so if you are very emotional then bhakti yoga is for you right surrender right if you feel you know your emotions are everything right if you feel you believe in your actions then go for karma yoga if you are someone who is you know chasing the knowledge then go for gyan yoga right different different ways you can adopt depending on your personality nobody is saying just do asanas so some people doing asanas is nothing they don't like doing asanas right they just want to sit and do meditation right for them raj yoga is there they can begin with the uh, you know steps of raj yoga the eight limbs of yoga that were given by patanjali so it's a very common misconception that is going on that okay just you know keep working on the body do asan do asan right no you can choose your personal 
depending on the basis of your personality you can choose because everything even though the starting point seems separate everything is merging into one only right all the schools of yoga they begin to merge together when i'll elaborate more on them i will tell you you know how they begin to merge but the beginning point should always be the one that convinces you right the one that keeps you motivated if somebody tells me you know my actions are having a uh, like are having an impact and i don't believe that thing right then you know no matter how much i try to do i will not be able to stay motivated to be on this path maybe for me you know emotions are heavier right they have more weightage in my life so i'll go for bhakti i will go for a sense of surrender right so that is why you know yesterday also i said first read the text once so that you at least know what is present right or maybe some path that you never thought that existed which is so close to how you feel or what you believe in you might find that and then you can go deeply in understanding okay this can be done that can be done so all of these practices of of yoga are just getting you into a harmony of things right and this text is a great starting point right so just go get any any book that you like and just start reading right don't stop then set your mind okay that today especially if you just read the translations no you can complete half a chapter in one day right even one chapter in one day you can do one school of yoga you can do so the best thing about bhagavad gita is depending on like so right now maybe you know about a few schools of yoga right so you can go and read that one because one chapter will complete that entire concept or two or three chapters as a combination of two or three chapters the entire concept will get covered right so here you can also pick and choose it's not like the yoga sutras that you have to go in a chronology only right but again i will say this thing pass your eyes through all the 18 chapters once right and then decide which one is for you any doubts any doubts from anyone no doubts all right. so uh, today we are going to like uh, i wanted to start a little bit earlier but today we are going to begin with a very interesting concept uh, and um, um, Uh, this will help you to gain more insight into your own personality and how you know as um, your day goes by why you do certain things right so it's not totally your own will but it sometimes you know the nature also of the body which becomes very dominant right so like in ayurveda you read about the three doshas um in yoga there is the philosophy of three gunas right three qualities of nature three qualities of nature three gunas t r i g u n a s three means three yes and guna is the quality so if you go to the uh, theoretical background of yoga which is the sankhya philosophy so sankhya philosophy believes that we are a combination of two things okay one is the consciousness okay so purush it's called purush p u r u s h a and then there is the other part prakriti p r a k r i t i purush and prakriti all right and for some unknown reason both of them come in contact 
when they come in contact with one another the three qualities which are generally balanced they come into an imbalance okay so for some unknown reason when these two become like come into a combination right there is some imbalance that is caused in the three qualities of nature which finally leads to more evolution right so these three qualities show up in the prakriti part right so your body so they i'll just name them we have done this in diet also sattva rajas and tamas s a t t v a sattva rajas r a j a s and tamas t a m a s so all three of them they have an impact on us and like the three doshas these three gunas also uh, one thing is your overall personality okay so it can be a combination it is generally a combination of two things right uh, and uh, one thing is your overall personality you will be able to understand which um, depending on what traits are dominant in you and then the same thing is that they vary throughout the day also okay so uh, at one point of time one of them becomes more dominant than the other two right so depending on their qualities again you can easily see how your day is going and which one of them becomes dominant right so now tamas is the quality which is uh, you know the least preferable okay so i will give you solutions also for the three gunas like how you can move from the um, tamas or the rajas to the sattva quality right and initially you have to right now we have to work towards moving towards the highest quality which is sattva and eventually the yogi the yogi rises above the influence of all these three okay so we are very heavily influenced by all three of them our state of mind our actions they change according to the dominance of either one of these right but the yogi becomes free from their influence that is who the yogi is the one who has attained the final stage is free from this you know binding of the nature right and only human being can uh, you know human being has the capability to free themselves right if you see uh, the animals you know uh, they are very much in sync with nature okay so whenever you know there is uh, some you know um, depending on what quality changes their actions also change they cannot uh, deny that thing they cannot move away from that thing right it is human beings who have been given a higher cognition right where we can process okay this is what is going on but we are also given ways through which we can come out of these the influence of these three qualities right so uh, i'll begin with actually tamas only first because it is the lowest uh, quality of all three of them okay tamas is generally associated with the color black okay so if you uh you know wear a lot of black or have a lot of black around you then um, you will see that this kind of energy you know it has a grip on you right so um uh, tamas is generally associated with a lot of lethargy and dullness right so from now onwards you can begin to make uh, changes okay so depending on the color so when you become aware of the things that you are using or how you are using them or whatever is present around you right so you begin you can 
consciously change those things also so if you wear a lot of black right and if you uh, if you're again and again having this thing why do i feel so dull right so you can on a very very surface level what you can do you can eliminate the black right maybe go and buy some clothes which have other colors right or uh, maybe uh, everything around you maybe your walls are painted you know black right so what you can do you can uh, if you cannot go ahead and get some other uh, you know color painted on the walls you can at least put up something very colorful on the walls around you so all of these little little things you can begin to change in order to shift the um, entire you know um, uh, influence of one of the uh, qualities to move towards the other one right so tamas you will see um, tamas is also generally associated with a lot of like you know ignorance right so you will see people who are uh, very very ignorant and they don't believe in spirituality so you will come across a lot of people you know you will do yoga right and uh, you would want to teach them yoga right but they are not interested at all right and you are just say why can't you see and that person is just like this is not logical why can't you see this thing right it means tamas is very dominant in their personality because the ignorance is too much right they do not believe that something can work towards elevate elevating their suffering right and they don't believe in spirituality at all right so this will happen especially uh, um, you know with a because you will in the beginning try to convince the people who are closest to you know to uh, follow yoga if you see the benefits you would want them to do right so first of all you will see this thing happen in the people around you right sometimes they happen to be spiritual so it's a good like fortune that you have a good luck right so for me like uh, when i uh, you know started practicing yoga i wanted everybody in my family also to do it right but um, i saw that my sister initially right now she is very like you know very much in sync but initially because when i used to go and practice so much i was very excited right and i am i'm the younger sibling out of the two of us right so now younger sibling has a very you know uh, jumpy jumpy kind of energy right so whenever i used to go and practice and i used to see the benefits immediately i used to come go to her and you know tell her everything about okay this is what is happening you should also practice and i saw a lot of resistance come from her at that point of time she was just say aisa kuch nahi hota right this is nothing this i don't believe in all of these things right and i used to say no 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 there there's something behind it you should practice you should see right so then eventually like uh, at that point of time she was very very res- resistant she, she was like because uh, for her the examples that was set were not very good right when it came to spirituality right so she was always very resistant right but eventually you know she as i as uh time changed and you know as um, she saw me also change with the practices she you know saw other people who are close to her who were practicing and she saw what kind of relief or change it brought along she also eventually became open to that thing so uh, it was not her inherent quality to have the tamas in her but at that point of time there was a lot of resistance right so i saw this thing and uh, i knew that she believed in something more than just the you know surface level things but at that point of time when i you know came with that approach with full on energy right i saw a lot of uh, withdrawal from her that no i don't want to do this thing right so same case goes for you when somebody in your life you know you will go with a lot of enthusiasm to them they might take a step back right and it is nothing it's just the uh, you know uh, at that point of time that quality just dominating them right and eventually with time you will see everybody you know comes around right when they see that all of the positive changes that are coming in your life they will also try at least give it a try right so you have to understand this thing that you cannot push anyone because it is the quality it is the nature's quality it is the 
tamas which becomes dominant it is not the person who doesn't want to do it right or it is not uh, that because you are doing it the other person is opposed right it is the quality which becomes dominant and eventually it be begins to you know uh, also ease up with time so you have to be very patient if somebody in your life is not open towards such things right so generally when the tamas is very very high in the body so you feel very lethargic you feel very dull you know sometimes you just don't want to wake up in the morning right uh, so to do your practices so tamas is dominating at that point of time because tamas is connected with sleep okay tamas is connected with heaviness right so when you wake up in the morning you don't want to wake up what is happening there you feel so much heaviness in the body people who uh, have depression you know they feel so much heaviness in the mind right so that heaviness doesn't allow them to you know do other things you have to understand it is the qual- quality which is coming into play when uh, these symptoms show up right so tamas is again very very important also gravity also is uh, you know representing the tamasic uh, uh, quality of the nature it is keeping us in connection with the earth right the heaviness the pull it is keeping us on the ground right so uh, it has its own qualities and it is quite essential but the reaction that we give to this quality so the reactiveness and the again and again we go into a loop that becomes problematic all right so you cannot eliminate the qualities right because you are a part of nature but you can be free from their influence okay you can f- be free from the reactiveness of the uh, various qualities right so people who are very apathetic also in nature their tamas is very high okay um the laziness dullness or what are the qualities are associated apathy uh, sense of uh, okay yeah so people who have disease in their body right so that is tamas because of tamas right uh, a person who has uh, who is moving towards satvik quality they begin to because they begin to work on their body they eventually become uh, free from disease they have a healthy body so if your body is not healthy at this point of time means it is a tamas quality which is showing up on the body right so tamas there are different ways to break out of all uh, tamas also so tomorrow i will elaborate a little bit more on how you can break out of tamas any doubts till here ma'am i just want to cross check uh, you said that one of the characteristic of tamas is apathy the characteristic of tama tamas is apathy something you the one word you use apathy just want to apathy. cross check apathy that. okay uh, yes apathy a p a t h y apathy is okay. when you are like so uh, empathy is when like you are telling me something and i empathize i feel that yes. okay with your struggle right but mm-hmm. you will see there are some people who are very apathetic towards what you are going through right they are very they act very cold or they are totally uh, not uh, you know um, they're not even connecting with the emotions or they are very very cold uh, okay. by default you know it's not something they do right they just don't feel that emotional connect or that there's this kind of detachment so that is uh, again tamas is very high in that person that is why uh, they, because the yogi when they cleanse themselves when they uh, do the uh, work on the mental and the physical cleansing they become more connected to nature so they are very they become very very uh, you know they're able to see that whatever i am doing what kind of consequences happening right so the empathy the sympathy these things increase a lot right but apathy will only occur when you are in ignorance right so tamas again has this quality of ignorance right so apathetic person will be ignorant towards what you are going through yeah okay ma'am thank you any other doubts from any other 
thing that thing that we have discussed. What else? All right. So tomorrow no, we will continue with the three gunas, and I will also tell you what is given in Bhagavad Gita tomorrow. Right? Bhagavad Gita will become very very relevant for us from now on, now now onwards. Okay. So uh, let's close today's session. Sit comfortably. Keep your back and neck straight. Gently close your eyes. Start observing the breath. We will chant Om one time, followed by three shantis. Take a deep inhalation for Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Turn the palms together and gently bow down. We will just. Begin our day with a sense of gratitude. Begin to rub your palms together. Keep your palms on your eyes. Very slowly while blinking and looking at your palms, begin to open up your eyes, come back with a big smile. Namaste to everyone. I will see all of you for your pranayam class in the afternoon. Take care, guys, and bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.